Welcome to another great free clinic on Virtual Football Clinic. Please be sure to like and subscribe to the channel if you enjoy it. All right, so we're going to start, guys. Um, the next speaker is uh, Coach Wayne Cameron from the Calgary St. Peters. He's the DB coach and the draft coordinator. So, Coach, up to you. Thanks a lot, guys. Uh, really excited to have the opportunity to, uh, to speak to everybody tonight. I uh, want to thank Paul, want to thank uh, Matthew for asking me, first of all, to be a part of this. And then, of course, you know, putting it all to uh, all together. I've been fortunate to uh, to be able to hear some of the other speakers earlier today. Uh, and I thought those guys did a fantastic job. It's been very educational, uh, very informative. Um, and for me, as I just mentioned to these guys, um, you know, this is only the second or third time that I've done one of these in this format. So uh, hopefully I can. Hopefully I can uh, keep pace with how well some of those other guys did today. Guys, what I'm going to talk about tonight is um, some of the different man coverage variations uh, that we like to, to play in Canadian football, both at uh, um, the CFL level and the U sports level. Uh, I'm going to have video clips from both. It'll be mostly CFL, uh, but I'm going to have some U sports uh, clips uh, from, from my time as the defensive back coach at Wilfrid Laurier as well too. Um, because sometimes there's a conception, I think, that there's, there's certain things that you can, only, you can only get away with, you can only play at the pro level because of the caliber of athlete. Uh, and I really think that's, I, I really don't, I don't fall into that category at all. I think that if, if you can commit to, uh, to teaching some of these concepts, um, some of the more difficult concepts, the players at the U sports level and even down into the CJEP and the high school levels, they most certainly can uh, they most certainly can pick them up. So the big one that we'll talk about tonight that I'll spend the biggest, uh, sort of the largest bulk of my time on is uh, an off uh, full switch man coverage. So defensive backs are switching with linebackers uh, and other defensive backs and all the permutations that that looks like. And I'll take you through that. Uh, and then once I've sort of exhausted everything with that, then I'll touch briefly on some of the other uh, coverage variations that we have. Just to tell you a little bit about myself uh, and my background and, and really the most important thing, who I've been able to be fortunate to learn from. Um, I've spent 14 seasons as a defensive back coach at Wilfrid Laurier University uh, in the OUA conference. That was uh, spread out over two different stints, uh, 2004 to 2009, uh, and then it returned in 2012 and 2019. Uh, in the two seasons in between, I served as the assistant defensive back coach for the Hamilton Ticats in 2010 and 11. Um, and then in the four years prior to joining the coaching staff with the Calgary Stampeders, so 2016 through 2019, uh, I worked with the, uh, with the personnel department with the Stampeders uh, as a U sports scout, focusing on OUA players uh, as we prepared for the Canadian draft uh, and as an NFL scout um, for any future potential uh, negotiation list players that we may have wanted to add. So. Uh, I've had the fortunate uh, opportunity to work under four different excellent defensive coordinators uh, during my time who all brought uh, different strengths um, that I've tried to pick up from. Ron Van Moorkirk and myself uh, worked together for so long, it seems like a marriage at this point in time. Um, and I was fortunate to work under two defensive coordinators with the Ticats, Greg Marshall, uh, who's now the, uh, the head coach at the University of Toronto. Uh, Corey Chamberlain, uh, who went on to be a, a two-time head coach in the CFL, won a Grey Cup uh, in 2013 as a head coach uh, with the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, and now currently uh, Brent Monson, uh, the defensive coordinator uh, for the Calgary Stampeders. So just before I move into the presentation, uh, my email is listed there uh, in case anybody has any questions or wants to ask anything uh, going forward, whether that be after the presentation or, or at any time in the future. It's dcameron at stampeders.com. Uh, and similarly, I can be reached on Twitter at Coach D. Cameron. All right, so just to start off, what are some of the schematic keys uh, to successful man-to-man -man coverage? Um, and of course, you know, everybody's going to have different ideas of, of the things that are important. Um, but I think in order to be successful, you have to ensure that the man coverage alignment you're asking your players to play relates to the type of front that you're playing and the help that you're going to provide them in coverage, right? And alignment really is broken down into two different parts uh, for me anytime we're playing man-to-man -man coverage, all right? First, there's the defensive back's depth, and that depth should be relative to the type of pass rush that we have in the front. So 
if it's a base four man rush, if you're adding one and sending five, or whether you really want to get after the quarterback and send six or seven uh, rushers after the QB, uh, the depth that the defensive back at should be tied specifically to the type of pressure that you're going to put on the quarterback. And then the second part of that is the leverage, whether it's inside or outside, it should be related directly to the type of help that you may or may not be providing the cover players. So you ask yourself, am I going to provide them a high post player in the middle of the field? Are we going to provide them with a one or two middle hole players in the middle of the field? Uh, is it split safety protection over the top, which is obviously your, your cover two man type look? Um, what kind of help are we going to give those guys? And that really should ultimately determine where you play inside shade or whether you play outside shade. So those two big things are, are blind. Uh, I know sometimes uh, defensive back coaches, coordinators, just kind of let their, their defensive backs sort of do what they feel comfortable with. When you watch the lower levels of, of football, oftentimes you see guys, they just want to play bump and run press all day, right? And then we can't figure out why they're giving up four touchdowns over the top. So um, you really want to make sure that those two things are tied into it for sure. It's really, really important. Um, and I, I'm new working in the secondary with Coach Monson, but certainly uh, Coach Van Moore, Kirk Laurier can attest to this. It's imperative to me that defensive backs are prepared. I always take pride in ensuring that my defensive backs never come off the field after a series and say, Coach, they lined up in something or they motioned to something and we didn't know what to do. We, we didn't know what to check. We didn't know how to play it. We had never seen it before. And so if you have clearly defined rules and adjustments, it takes those situations away. What are some of those situations? Formational changes. And I heard a couple of coaches talk about earlier today about how they, how they track motion. Motion is really a game changer in Canadian football in terms of what makes defending the pass difficult in the Canadian game specifically, right? Specifically late motion. And so how are you gonna to adapt to formational changes? And there's a multiple different ways you can do it. You can spin your defensive backs, which in Calgary we refer to as rock and roll. You could track your defensive backs. So if you get a, an offense that motions from 32 to 23, the Sam just tracks across the formation. If it went from 32 to 41, the boundary half just tracks and the free safety always stays high in the post. Um, or you can bump your linebackers, which I don't really think a lot of teams do that much anymore, uh, especially with the propensity of teams to pass so much. They don't want to get that will linebacker out in space or certainly expose them in man coverage against a receiver. But some, some coaches, I think, still do. They bring the Sam into the box when it motions from 32 to 23, and then they push the will out into space. Not, none of them are perfect, and there's nothing wrong with any of them. Um, but you want to make sure you've got clearly defined rules. And you may have different rules depending on what kind of coverage, whether you're playing man or zone. Radical splits, okay? So we may make, as a, as, a, as a defensive coach, you may have a pass defense call where you say, okay, we're playing inside leverage on this call, but you get an incredibly reduced or tight split, or you get a, a receiver that motions down tight to the tackle, right? And in that scenario, you need him to flip his leverage from inside to outside, not just because of where he's aligned relative to, to the passing aspect of things, but you may need to become, as that defender, a D-gap run player if they run the ball. OK. All right. So radical splits are something that you that you have to make sure that you've got some some leeway and rules in there. And it's the same thing if it's a really wide split. We might say we're playing off man outside leverage, but too strong gives the field halfback an incredibly wide, um, yeah, an incredibly wide split. And so it's it's better off for him with all that space to go ahead and move inside. Stacks and switch releases. Anytime you get two receivers that come in tight proximity, what are we going to do? How are you going to handle it? Are you going to have, are, are they both on, are one of those guys on the line of scrimmage or are they both slots off the line of scrimmage? And I think it's important to have more than one way to play these things. So whether you're going to, whether you're going to bring your corner down and press the man on the line of scrimmage and have the, uh, and have the halfback play the, play the man off the line of scrimmage over the top whether you're going to back both guys off and play an, an inside out IO technique, which is essentially just an inside out bracket on the two receivers, just make sure that they have clearly defined rules for those situations. Uh, as I said, it certainly can help you from giving up explosion plays or having busts in coverage. Right. And that same thing even becomes more pronounced when we're talking about three man clusters or bunches. However, you may refer to that particular term. Um, and, and within that, you got to know, okay, is one of those three guys in the cluster, is he on the line of scrimmage or are all three of them slots off the line of scrimmage? Is it a, is it a static cluster or is it a motion to cluster, 
right? And make sure that you give your, give your players clearly defined rules and techniques for how to play those, right? And then tight ends and wings, right? Are you a team that's going to, to adjust? So if they come out and deuce personnel with a fullback and he lines up on the weak side as a tight end, are you automatically going to have your Sam play on that side and you're going to take your boundary half and put him over to the number three receiver on the other side, right? How are you going to play that? Or if you've got a coverage where you say, we're going to play inside leverage, but then one of the receivers lines up as a tight end, well, now you need a D-gap run defender, so you've got to be able to adjust and make sure he knows to align outside in case that tight end blocks down on the end and he's got to be a run force player. So uh, all of those things are very important. And then lastly, something that you may not think about, but how are we going to cover the running back, right? Obviously, we've got linebackers in that situation. Are you going to play off man where essentially they're just going to drop into hold players? And I'm going to show you about that shortly. Uh, or do you want your linebacker to go up and, and mug the running back, essentially blitz to engage, right? So you rush the line of scrimmage, force him to engage you and take him at the line of scrimmage. Or is it a scenario where you're going to go six or seven man pressure and you're not going to have anybody in the back end particularly attributed or directly attributed to that running back? And now you need to you need to coach appeal situation for all of your players, whether it's defensive ends, linebackers, defensive tackles, you need to make sure we're all on the same page so that we don't give up busted plays. Man coverage alignments, okay, that we're gonna go over here tonight. And uh, off man is gonna be the one that we're gonna spend the bulk of our time on, but we're also gonna talk a little bit about zero man, catch man, and trail man. And there's a couple other, but I'm not gonna touch on them all today. Uh, I can tell you from an organizational standpoint in our playbook this year as, as we put it together, Every different type of man coverage we have on the sheet, all it says for our defensive backs is it's off man coverage, it's zero man coverage, it's catch man coverage. We've got a glossary of terms. They go and they learn what off man means and what zero means and what catch means and what trail means. And so whenever they flip the page to that particular coverage and they see, okay, this is a catch man coverage, already immediately right in their head right now, they know where they need to align. If it's trail man, they know exactly where they need to align and the technique they need to play. All right, so when do we play off man? All right, we play off man in four and five man pressures. Okay, so whether it's a base four man rushers or whether we're gonna add one and send one of the inside linebackers, how do we play off man? Well, we play with outside leverage, okay? And outside leverage to me means my inside foot is on the receiver's outside foot. We always wanna stay within the framework of the body of the receiver. I don't like to see defensive backs play leverage where they're actually outside of the framework of the body. It just makes it too difficult for any route that breaks in the opposite direction for them to have to play, okay? We want that receiver to have to work through. So our inside foot on their outside foot, essentially shoulder to shoulder, my inside number on their outside number of their jersey. We're gonna line up seven or eight yards off, okay? We don't wanna be around to be down at four or five, that's a different kind of coverage. And we don't wanna be back at nine or 10 because again, that's a different kind of coverage. So make sure as a defensive back coach, you're really specific uh, on making sure that the leverage and the depth that the uh, that the defensive backs align to is consistent, all right? In our off man, we're gonna have post and hole help. We may have two hole players, depending on, on what we're doing in the front. If it's a four man pressure, we'll have two. If it's a five man pressure, we'll just have the single hole player, um, but we'll always have a post player there to help out. In terms, of, uh, in terms of how we align relative to the wide receiver, I refer to it as a tilt position. Uh, it's a 45 degree, um, a turn from the line of scrimmage. We've got our outside foot up and our inside foot back. We don't play with our back to the sideline. So it's not a full half turn. Essentially it's that quarter turn, 45 degrees. Okay. And the reason we do that uh, is because it allows us to be efficient in our push kick shuffle technique. Um, when I play defensive back, all I was ever taught was a pedal technique. And I'll be honest with you, now that I'm on the other side of this, well on the other side of it uh, as a coach, I really wish somebody had taught me how to, how to play a shuffle technique because to me, it is much a much more efficient technique to be able to transition in and out of your breaks, specifically on vertical routes, okay? We want to allow the wide receiver to close the cushion, okay? Because we've got an open shoulder position to run with verticals, we don't need to worry about getting beat by verticals, okay? And we don't want to have so much separation in the cushion that they can just run routes inside underneath and stop routes in front of us pitch and catch with the quarterback uh, and get first downs all day, okay? So we want them to eat up our cushion with the confidence in our athletic ability that if they are running a seven, eight or nine route, post corner go route, we're ready to run with them already, okay? 
And the thing, the other thing that this allows for us to do is to have an ideal position to see inside the cross key for some of these switches um, that you're going to see on the film here. Okay, so whether that's a, a mesh concept where we're getting a crossing rope from the other side of the uh, from the other side of the field, or whether you have the running back to your side and he's releasing out, and we may have to switch, or whether it's just a two-man switch release stack that we've got to switch on. That position really helps you out in that. Okay. And then we're going to implement our full switch rules, all right, with the linebackers. Okay? And the linebackers are playing inside for us to help to defend against the radical inside routes. What is, what is this full switch man that you're talking about, Coach? Well, to me, it's the most effective form of man coverage when you're running a base four-man pass rush or five-man pressure front. It provides strong outside leverage coverage by defensive backs, with inside leverage protection on radical releases inside by wide receivers. Defensive backs and linebackers work together with an ability to pass wide receiver or running back routes off to each other and potentially exchange responsibilities if the running back does not release. And that would be in, in a five-man pressure. All right. This scheme can be incorporated at all levels of football. I'm confident in that. If it's supported by coaches through clear and concise teaching and the proper practice preparation, that is the key right there, the, practice, the proper practice preparation, all right? This is new for coaches. This is new for a lot of players. And so you've got to dedicate time to it, right? So what does that preparation include? Install it in the beginning of training camp and run it from day one, right? You need reps to get good at this. This is not something that you can add in over time and throw in. Your players are going to, they're, they're going to mess it up. They're going to bust assignments. They're going to drop routes that they should carry. And they're going to carry stuff they should drop. I guarantee you it's going to happen. It happens at every level. So put it in at day one. Let them get enough reps at it from the get-go that they start to get comfortable with it. And you can always correct it in the film. There's nothing wrong with getting beat in practice. And they need lots of practice to get good at this. Dedicated film time. I strongly advise that you create offensive concept cut-ups of the type of routes that you're going to see that this is going to help offset. Okay, so mesh concepts, picks, rubs. Stacks that we talked about, um, the uh, the clusters that we talked about, back out, those sort of type things. Make sure you put cut-ups together that you can study with your players so that you can talk through before you even get on the field how those concepts would play out when you defend them, okay? And then dedicated walk-through time with cards that have been drawn by the coaching staff, right? Um, Coach V at Laurier, and I certainly know Coach Monson, uh, you know, when I've been a guest coach in training camp in previous years, We've got cards drawn in pre-practice, right? And so you just have your, you know, you have your other group, you have the other linebackers and defensive backs that aren't in, you have them run the routes, right? And you just work it on air. You work it at walk pace before you even begin to implement it into the next level, which is to ensure that those plays are in your scout, scally, and team periods. Always make sure every, every day, day one, day two, day three, whatever your regular practice schedule looks like, Make sure there's plenty of opportunity for your players to get and feel comfortable with this type of coverage. Why full switch, man? Why would we want to do this? Why would we want to run the risk of, of having guys drop routes and make mistakes and ask linebackers to run with wide receivers? Why would we want to do that? Okay, so that we can defend effectively two-man stacks and switch releases between defensive backs. So we can defend three-man bunch and clusters, both motion and static between defensive backs. So we can defend man-to-man -man beating crossing concepts like mesh where defensive backs are getting picked off or they're getting just beat because they're playing outside leverage and the receiver's fast and he just runs away from them. And by the time they catch him, it's a first down. These things are all in place to help you with that, right? And we can defend running back releases, whether it's a flat release, swing release, check down release. Um, when they're combined with picks and rubs, they can be a challenge in man-to-man. -man. That's why they run them when they're anticipating man-to-man. -man. So if you don't have defenders chasing through those things, it really negates the effectiveness of what they're trying to do to you. Okay. What it also provides is one or two potential hole defenders in the middle of the field. Remember, we're playing outside leverage, so we're funneling the receivers inside. Okay. And so what we're doing is we're creating defensive traffic in those windows, right? Our whole defenders play in the dig intermediate windows and they kind of cloudy the picture for the quarterback, right? He thinks man-to-man -man coverage outside leverage, he can throw the ball in the middle of the field all day. But if you're going to drop your guys and not play tight mug coverage on the running back, those windows aren't going to be wide open, okay? And then lastly, whole defenders can provide run support if you have a scenario where the quarterback breaks the pocket. There's a, there's a quarterback in the, uh, in the OUA that everybody's familiar with, Trey Ford at Waterloo. 
is an absolute nightmare to even consider playing man coverage against, right? Because everybody gets run off and then he can just take off. So if you've got one or two dedicated defenders who are in there to quickly add back in, if he or any other quarterback for that matter, uh, chooses to uh, chooses to break out because he can't find anybody open, it's great to have that immediate add-in support right there, okay? So lastly, before I go to some film, what does it look like? It's the most efficient form is with a four-man rust because it provides us post help and two man hole defenders in the middle of the field. We can run it in a five-man pressure with a linebacker blitz blitzer, and that just means we've still got our post help and one, one man in the middle in the hole. DBs do not chase radical inside underneath routes. They're not responsible for them, okay? Linebackers identify where the running back is and communicate pre-snap with the defensive backs. Hey, I'm with you, I'm with you, I'm with you. And I think I must have erased when I was fixing the slide here. I must have erased one of the things. Defensive backs are responsible for routes that go up and out. Okay, so anything in the vertical route tree, dig, corner, post, go route, DBs, you've got it on your own, right? You'll have the defender in the middle of the field, but you're not switching with anybody on that. Out routes, right? You've got that on your own, but it's the radical underneath inside crossing routes. You will not take them. They do not belong to you. We'll work with the linebackers to remedy that, okay? Off man technique for the linebacker and coverage, okay? So we're not mugging the running back at the line of scrimmage, right? And then pre snap, identify where are we plus one in base four man rush situations, okay? And what I mean by that is because we're going to drop both linebackers into the hole, the side opposite the running back, we're actually going to have plus one. So if they have three receivers, we're going to have four defenders. If they have two receivers, we'll have three defenders, right? So we'll always have a defender on that side of the field who is free to pick up an underneath crossing route from the running back side, okay? Coverage linebacker plays off. As I mentioned, do not mug. Linebacker drop up to 10 yards. This is really important, guys. And I know it's way down the list here of things that, that I have on here about it, but it's important for the backers to get up to 10 yards of depth so that the defensive backs can be confident when they're dropping those routes that go inside at five yards, those routes aren't climbing behind you because you're stuck at the line of scrimmage in a really poor drop. So we really got to ensure that the backers get out to 10 yards, keep all that traffic that's crossing, keep it in front of you. All right. Defensive backs must carry and deliver in five man pressures. Remember we're sending five, we're sending the extra linebacker, um, and, and the coverage linebackers man to man on the back. So if the back were to leave, if he were to leak out, right, he may not be there for us to pass the crosser from the other side off to. And that's what, so when you hear me say carry and deliver, we need to make sure that the linebacker is there before we drop that route. Okay. If he's gone, it belongs to us. We got to take it the whole way. If he's there because the running back hasn't left, then you can pass it to him. He'll take it. And then you replace as the whole player. All right, let me just exit out of this and get into some get into some film here. All right, can one of you guys? Uh, we were having some technical issues earlier on some test meetings. Can you guys just confirm for me that everybody can see this? Yeah, you're on, but I don't think your uh, optimized video is on. Okay. So let me. I'll just reshare again. That's cool. We're good now? Yep. There you go. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. So I've got three different types of um, three different types of clips I'm going to start with here. And I've got some hot spots. So ultimately the film is going to stop and pause on the areas that I really want you to focus on. What we're working on right now is rock and roll and two man switches and stacks and how this will play out for us. This stuff is great in the red zone and being able to switch and rock and roll your defenders anytime you get sub action behind the line of scrimmage like you see on this drawing right here, it's highly effective. So we've got our rock and roll defender who's lined up over three, our Sam linebacker, Jamal Wall. He's gonna become the free safety and the boundary half and corner are gonna take over these two routes. Okay, we see the corner passes the, the vertical by the tight end off to the halfback and he picks up the flat route and there's really nowhere for the quarterback to go in this situation. This would be much more difficult to defend if we were having to track across the formation uh, with the defender on the sub route in the flat. Okay, ball's in the middle of the field. It's a 23 set. Initially, it's going to motion to 32 and then come back again to 23. So we've got a, a, essentially a double rock and roll and then a switch release at the line of scrimmage on the snap. 
Okay, so our free safety, Royce Metch, he's gonna come down and cover three, and then he's got to switch and pick up a new three. Notice, notice how smooth and fluid these guys are. They're talking to each other, they're communicating. Hey, be ready, be ready to switch. There's the natural switch. Royce is sitting on top of the high shoulder of the corner route and cuts it off. Okay, so we've got another rock and roll situation here. This will freeze in a second. We're going to get the rock and roll coming from two weak here at the bottom of our screen. Boundary half is going to rotate up. The free safety is going to go down. The Sam linebacker who is on this slot right here, plus and back in, is actually going to switch and take the sub route coming across. So we've got a rock and roll and then a 3-4 switch to the front side. And then it always helps when your opponent's best receiver falls down. That's always great defense. Okay, this is a this is a really cool one here for you to see. They're in a 14 set. All right, so we've got essentially all our personnel in the boundary. Our field half is the free safety in our rock and roll right now. We're going a five man pressure gray. They freeze motion us, Daytona, whatever you call it, just to kind of get an idea what kind of coverage we're in. These are the guys involved, as you see right here. We're going to get a switch all the way with the field corner, all right? They're just running a sub route with a pick. They're trying to pick whoever's tracking back across on this. Field corner here does an outstanding job of recognizing what's coming, switching off, coming down and making the play. Okay, and then this is the last one in this particular set. There isn't a... Uh, I don't believe I set up the, the hot spot on this. All right, we've got three strong, 89 here, right here in the middle of the field. He's gonna run, okay, I do have the hot spot on it. Um, he's gonna run the sub route and we're gonna exchange between the Sam linebacker and the free safety to limit this pass to no gain. Notice how anytime, anytime how we coach this is anytime you get this guy in here tight like this and he looks like he might sub, Essentially, these two guys come down to about 10 yards and they piston, right? One guy shoots up, one guy goes down because he could stay on the front side and then the Sam would have to add back down in and Royce would shoot high or he could shoot behind the line of scrimmage, Royce goes down and he stays high. So it's important that both of those guys pre-snap are essentially at the same depth so that they can piston this thing. Excellent open field tackle. Okay, so that's what our two-man switches look like. I'm going to get into a, some cluster plays here. They're going to motion to a cluster up here at the top of the screen. I'll fast forward it so we can get to that point in time. So we're three on three at this point in time. So whatever your call for this is, like, I mean, different people obviously have different terminology in terms of what they call it. Um, you want to make sure that however they try and leverage you, that you've got somebody that can account for, for all the routes if they run vertically, okay? Because it's still full switch man, if we get a radical under out of these guys, it's still going to go to the linebacker. We're going to drop it. But all three of these routes go up and out, right? So the defensive backs are going to take all three of them, right? So you want to make sure that you've got a communication in place for guys to take all three of these. Okay. And the best way to do this, guys, in my full opinion, and, you know, I guess a little bit it comes down to how much information do you want to share. Um, but at the end of the day, the best way to play this is to play it off so that everybody has an opportunity to, to read it out. Okay. You play everybody off at eight or nine yards. Let this thing sort itself out in front of you. And as you can see, by the time these guys get five or six yards up the field, they've already delineated who's going to have who. If you played your defensive backs down here at five, that they're going to, these receivers are going to get on your toes really quick. And this is going to be an incredibly difficult read. But if you back up and let it sort itself out in front of you, especially if you're in a down and distance situation that's favorable for you to give some room, it's going to benefit you greatly. Okay, we're going to get a cluster that's going to come across here into the boundary. I actually drew the routes in as well, too, just because it's such a funky look. I was working on my artistic skills. Okay, so again, we get this this kind of this trio look right here, which is a term that I used at Laurier in terms of how we defend these three in a, in a, in a motion to cluster right here. You back up and just let it all sort itself out, 
right? And you can see by the time they're five yards in, let me get this to run and stop. You can see right now who's going to be responsible for who. Out here, the corner's already bought this one, we can tell. So now essentially it's just turned to an inside out between these two defenders on these two receivers. Now, you want to make sure you keep the proper leverage. We do get beat a little bit on this one, but everybody makes the correct decision in terms of who they're responsible for. Okay. This is an interesting one, right? This is this is going to switch over two guys. All right. So this isn't going to just go from a, a switch between one and two guys. I'd like for you to look right now at the free safety. Royce is communicating with our Sam linebacker. Right now, watch what comes next once this plays out. Once we see three going to the flat, now you see the you see the Sam linebacker communicating with the field half. Right. So these guys are all dialed in together. And it's easy. Nobody panics. Nobody chases. Nobody ends up in a bad spot. Royce, you know, this is a bit of a challenge here. They give him kind of a diagonal, which then works back to the corner, which is incredibly difficult to cover, right? But our boundary corner is playing free safety back there. Knows how to read a quarterback. It makes an incredible play on the football. Right, and gets the pick out of it. Okay, down here in the red zone again, this is really important. Right, because you give up anything, it's in the end zone. So we get this motion to cluster here again. Watch how patient these guys are. They just let this thing sort itself out in front of them. Easy switches, everybody's covered. Nowhere to go with the football. Nobody chasing, nobody getting picked, nobody getting rubbed. They just let it sort out. Right, so those are our clusters. Now what I want to do is show you a few plays of how this all ties in together, all right? We've looked at two-man switches, we've looked at three-man switches, and now we're going to tie this in with the linebackers involved. Okay, we're in a four-man pressure, so we're going to have, or sorry, just a four-man rush. So we're going to have uh, two whole players. We're going to get action on both sides here. I'm going to hotspot the top of the screen for you because this is really where I want you to focus first, but we get action on both sides here. So what do we have? We've got the tailback on the weak side. So when I'm looking at this, I see we're even numbers wise. We've got one, two, three defenders for these one, two, three receivers. Everybody else, he's going up high. He's going to be the free safety. Everybody else is, is, is on the other side, okay? So how are we gonna sort this out? It essentially at this point in time, as soon as this running back takes one step, almost becomes a cluster at this point in time. You see three men, in a tight space. So we get the immediate under. The defensive backs know they can pass that off to the linebacker. The linebacker also knows if it continues across the formation, he can let it go to the mic because they're plus one on this side. You heard me say plus one before. We've got one, two, three, and one, two, three, four defenders. So right away, if we get that immediate under route, the will knows he can carry and deliver it and then drop it because whether it's the mic or whether it's the Sam or the halfback, Somebody's going to be over here to pick this route out. Now, as it is, they run a sit route down over top of the ball. It is what it is. Not worried about it. And then with the tailback leaking out on the swing route, the corner and the half just to have to IO that. The tailback goes outside. It goes to the corner. The receiver stays inside to the halfback. Now to the bottom of the screen here, right, we're getting the rock and roll late coming back across the formation on the sub action and then a switch release on top of that. So Jamar's got to work his way back down and then switch receivers with the halfback. And we gotta make sure we tackle a little bit better, right? Here's another example. Okay, tailback set on the weak side. So we know we're even right here, plus one to the field, right? They've got three, we've got one, two, three, four. Okay, so this is our even side. This is our plus one side. We get the switch release between three and two, right? So the half takes the seam route, the Sam, Sits down essentially as an extra hole player, passes that bat route off to the uh, linebacker. Now the linebacker in this situation, because the tailback leaves and goes out on the swing, if this were to carry across the field, the linebacker's got to run with it because the wheel's got to expand with this route. Both of these routes here are vertical or outside, so those are going to be manned up by the DBs. Okay, and then quarterback gets out of the pocket, but those those two uh, those two hole players that I talked about are able to add back in before he gets too far.
All right, here's a good example. First things first, we're in a 30 front here, so we've gained an extra player off the line of scrimmage. It's this guy right here. He's a defensive end. Essentially, he's going to play Will Linebacker on this play. This guy is a robber, right, in this particular play, so he doesn't count within what we've been talking about. He's not a part of any of the switches, okay? So we're going to get a full mesh concept here. Two strong and two weak are going to go underneath. The tailback's going to run the swing. Okay, so our halfback takes the tailback going out. The mic initially goes to chase him, sees that he's got a receiver coming in. He switches, he picks it up. He doesn't need to chase it because he knows we're plus one in the boundary, right? We've got one, two, three for only there two. So as this goes across his face, he can let it go because one of these guys is gonna be available to pick it up. Okay, which one is it? It all depends. If this route runs vertical, then it's going to be him. If this route runs under, then it's going to be him that's available. It's an underneath route, so the boundary half is now available to pick up the crosser coming back to the boundary. Now, the will linebacker, in this case, the defensive end, as you can imagine, he doesn't spend a lot of time in this position. So he ultimately thinks he needs to take it, which is fine. It works out, but he doesn't need to take it. The half you see sitting right here, Smitty's going to come down and put the hammer on Quan Bray. So you get an idea of how much easier these routes are to cover when you don't have to chase through traffic. And if you're a defensive back, if you know you don't have to chase 40 yards across the field for a five-yard route, you're excited. You're happy. Okay, so where are we plus one? Well, back's in the boundary. So we know we're, we're even to that side. We're plus one to the field. Three receivers, one, two, three, four cover defenders, right? So anything working from the boundary back to the field, we're always going to have a free player over here to take it. All three routes to the field run vertically. They clear the backer. So the mic will pick up the crosser as it works over. You see our will initially carry and deliver, passes it off to Greenwood. Now he sits in the hole. The back hasn't released. So he just sits in the hole right here, okay? And then our boundary half, when two weak goes underneath, he essentially becomes the second hole player, replacing the mic, who's taking two weak across the field. And all he's doing now is just reading the quarterback's eyes. And he sees him looking at that diagonal and he's trying to steal one. He's trying to get into that window. Quarterback sees that it's cloudy. Right now, the quarterback's looking at these two routes, okay? And what he has is he has this guy in a window, and he has that guy in a window, and he can't throw it. And what happens when he can't throw it? He gets chased out, right? We win. Okay, we're down in the red zone here, obviously on the three-yard line. Five-man pressure, so we're sending one of the linebackers. Now, a couple keys right here. Anytime you get two receivers tight to the tackle right here, we got and the back to that side, what do you think we're thinking? We're thinking that the back is going to release. He's going to come out. We're going to get picks and rubs. The other indicator is that this tailback is lined up behind the tackle, right? So if you're coaching your defense, always make sure your linebackers key these kind of things, right? So that he can say, hey, I'm with you. I'm with you. Alert switch, alert switch, alert switch right now. And what do we get? We get the switch. Now, the mistake that's made here is that our linebacker is too aggressive to this, okay? He's too aggressive. He doesn't need to chase this thing out. We're going to have a defender sitting out there waiting on it. He just needs to sit and wait for nine to come back inside. Unfortunately, his aggression makes him overrun it a little bit. He gets beat back inside and they get the touchdown. Okay. But everybody makes the right decision here. Everybody makes the correct decision in terms of who they have. Right. And if we don't overrun that, we're probably going to get home and get a sack. Okay, again, red zone again. And this is where this kind of coverage is really effective. This is the same team that we saw the full mesh concept with the tailback release on the swing two or three plays ago. Now, it was a different game, but it's the same team. We're getting the same route concept. This right here, guys, works out about as perfectly as you could ever hope for it to, right? Okay, so we're essentially the Mike linebacker is going to make a double switch. He's going to switch with the field half when the tailback runs the swing. You see he picks up two strong coming under. And now he looks back and he sees two weak coming over. So he switches on the front side. Then he switches the boundary half back on the back side. Everything's covered, right? we got a guy sitting waiting on this. This is covered. This is covered. This is covered. This is covered. And nobody has had to chase anything. What happens? Quarterback's got to step up and the front gets him. Okay, so we've got a motion to a cluster here at the top of the screen and a reduced split. The receiver skating down at the bottom. Okay, so we'll look at both sides here. Right, so we immediately get a radical under. Now, 
We get the radical under right now, so we've got a drop defender. And when I say drop defender, that just means a defender that's going to drop his man, right? He's going to drop his man, and which means he can now sit and wait to pick up a crosser. And because we've got an underneath route at the bottom, we're going to have a drop defender at the bottom of the screen. So we've got a drop defender on the strong side, a drop defender on the boundary side. Our Mike linebacker in the middle of the field doesn't need to chase anything. He literally can let these two routes crossing. He can let this one go to that guy. He can let this one go to that guy and just sit over top of the back. Okay, last one. This is just going to be an easy switch between. Now, again, take a look at this tailback. Where is he? Lined up behind the tackle. Not likely staying in. They're not running the football with that guy. You see the number two receiver starting to slowly work his way down towards the box. Easy switch. Right now, hey, I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm with you. You just got to alert the de defensive back that he's with you. Watch this easy switch. Under, backers got it. Out, DB's got it. Play's dead. Okay, so you may have a scenario or situation, and, and I'm just going to talk through this while I switch out of here because I'm going to go from our pro database into our college scouting one so I can show some youth sports film here for a second on this type of thing. But you may feel like I'm not sure if our guys can handle it. Trust me, your guys can handle it. And I'm going to show you some college film here of these guys doing this pretty darn well. They can handle this kind of thing. This will open up briefly here. Okay, so I'll go full screen here so you can see this. Four man rush, cover one. So base cover one, right? We got the hot spot on the Sam, excuse me, the Sam linebacker. It's a 23 set, ball in the middle of the field. 23 set. He gets a switch release between three and two. He's got the new three. He runs it underneath. He recognizes that the backers are there to take it. And so what does he do? He drops out immediately and gets into the dig window and drops the football. The one thing, you know, we can coach this stuff, can't coach him to catch, unfortunately. But this is a great angle right here from the end zone. You see how this works itself out, right? He's underneath. Now, this is our this is our first or second game of the year. Initially, he's like, I got to take this. Then he realizes, oh, wait, this doesn't belong to me. This belongs to the backers. Let me drop out of here, get into the dig window. Boom. Hands on it right there. Perfect. That's exactly what this is designed to do. Okay. Believe it or not, this clip is actually um, – this is a five-man zone pressure, okay? It's a five-man zone pressure. We're bringing the Sam on an inside gap, all right? But the reason I put the cut up, uh, the, the clip in here is because we get the mesh concept by the slots, but also because the way our guys play this is this plays out exactly like it would play out if we were in our five-man cover one black pressure, okay? So you see at the bottom here, we get the, we get the switch release. The halfback passes the vertical off to the corner. He now drops down. He gets eyes to what's coming back across the field and watch him drive this route. Okay. Now, listen, I'm not, I'm not a proponent of, you know, high hits to the head. And I certainly don't think he had any intent here to it, but you couldn't ask for this to play out any better as, as, as a, as a defensive back coach. Right. So you really take the crossing routes you take the picks, you take the rubs, you take them right out of the playbook. By playing this way. Okay, we're in a sub package here, seven defensive backs on the field. You can never get enough DBs on the field. Right? Okay, so we've got our Sam linebacker on three. We're going to get a mesh concept. He takes three. His eyes, because of the position he's in, immediately go to two weak on the other side. He sees it, passes it off, picks up the new one, and proceeds to drop the ball again. You can't make this stuff up. Right. He's a great tip drill guy. You'll see it here again. Eyes, sees through to two, passes it off, picks it up, plays over. Four man rush. We got a 41 set. Okay, we're gonna get sub motion behind the line of scrimmage. We're gonna rock and roll this right here. You're gonna see a free safety make a great play driving this route. The boundary half's gonna rotate up high to replace. So at all levels, guys, our players can handle this, right? We just got to coach it, teach it, um, communicate it, make sure you watch enough of it on film for them to figure it out. 
And it's just going to help you so much. It's going to help you so much. A lot of defensive coordinators will say, well, we can't play man to man because we can't run. We can't run with guys well enough. This helps you do that, right? This helps you do that because you don't have to run with everything, right? Last one here, we got our, our, our Will linebacker uh, and one of our sub defensive backs in the box. We've got a 41 tight bunch and it's going to motion to empty, right? We're going to empty and we're going to have to play with all this traffic, okay? We still get fence concept. You see it right here. Right, the will switches with the corner at the top. He takes the under route. He sees the one coming the other way, switches it off. Same thing with the sub sub linebacker. He sees it, he switches, chases it. Now he drops the ball. I think Laurier will be better off with a new with a new interception coach because the other guy, he didn't do very well teaching these guys how to catch. Right, so that's how effective this 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 type of coverage can be at all levels, right? So it's something you certainly can put in. Um, I see I've got 15 minutes left here. I'm gonna exit back out and go back into the into the pro stuff. And then I'm gonna hit into our, uh, I'm gonna set up the video, but then I'm gonna hit into our PowerPoint presentation here so I can talk about some, some different kinds of man, man coverage and how we align. got to do this. Hmm. Oh, come on. Sorry, man. There we go. Perfect. So I'm going to open up Green Rouge Miami. Open up Tree Cut Up. Then I will go like this. Okay, let's move on from, from switch band on to some other coverages. So our zero man, all right, our zero man coverage. So there's a couple different ways you play zero man, right? So we're either sending six man pressure with one of our cover players on the tailback or we're sending seven man pressure and one of our cover players is in that pressure. All right. And then, um, then it's a seal situation in the front. Okay, zero man, inside leverage, definitively inside leverage because we have no post and no hole help, right? One of the defensive backs is either on the running back or he's in the blitz, okay? If it's six man, he's on the running back. If he's in the blitz, it's seven man. Otherwise, uh, regardless of which, there is no post player in the middle of the field. In terms of our alignment, nine yards off, one yard inside. Okay, we've got, to, we've got to protect the inside here. No post or hole player. Defensive backs own all wide receiver releases. We're not passing anything off. We're not dropping radical inside releases. We own it all. Tilt position, we don't want to play square to the line of scrimmage. We want to be in tilt. We've got to anticipate a three-step quick throw due to the pressure. I think the quarterback it's been measured at, really, when you get in these seven-man pressures, has to get the ball out in like 1.5 seconds or less. Well, clearly you're not gonna get too many corner routes. You're not gonna get too many post routes uh, in that amount of time. So you really need to have patience and hold your water as a defensive back. Again, allow the wide receiver to close the cushion. Essentially, we need our DBs to flat foot at nine. And that really can, that creates a lot of anxiety for guys sometimes, right? Because they're afraid of getting run by. But the good ones have the confidence to sit in there and wait, right? Because they know that ball's coming out quick. If they are going to move, they really got to inch back on their push kick technique. Okay, There'll be a couple clips in here where you'll see some guys get out really fast, and that's certainly not how we would want them to do that. We switch, as, we switch with other DBs only, right, and almost exclusively only within the first five yards. So if it was a switch release, some kind of slanting up, you know, a really quick out, off and up, we can switch, but there's not a lot of stuff when you're in zero that you can switch, okay? And then have a specific check for a motion to cluster. We don't want to have any kind of player down at the line of scrimmage and press bump and run coverage if we get a motion to cluster here. So make sure your check in that situation is to have all three guys off the line of scrimmage so that we don't get caught deep, deep off the line of scrimmage, okay? And then be ready to run with verticals, all right? And the last thing there, as I mentioned earlier, do not align square to the line of scrimmage, okay? Do not align square to the line of scrimmage. All right, so what does our zero man look like, practically speaking? All right, I'm going to open this cut up here so we get a, a quick look at it. Right here. 
Okay, we're going to get a switch release by two and three to the field. No hot spots on these ones. Um, just a quick, and you see our switch right there. Notice everybody flatlining. Line of scrimmage is the 52. So these guys are essentially sitting eight, eight and a half to nine yards, right? They need to flat foot, slow play it, be ready to switch on this and drive it right now. Okay, you see here when you watch the pressure from the end zone, how fast the ball's got to come out, right? You got a defender in his face right away. Okay, we're in seven man pressure. So this is appeal. So this is, you know, for coaches that maybe are not quite sure how that works, I want you to realize here, essentially, whoever this guy tries to block owns him on appeal situation. So if he steps up to block you inside, you don't try and defeat the block. You got to take the block on because if they screen him, there's nobody left if you leave him. Conversely, if you were to run a flat route, a swing route, the edge rush player would take him. And then the next man in would try to adjust his route and get back outside on the edge. Okay. So tailback steps up originally here, right? Our edge player sniffs this out. It's Winton McManus, our will linebacker. He kind of figures out what's going on here and he's sitting on it, makes a play. Let's take a look at it from the end zone. This is what peel looks like in zero. And, you know, I know I'm a DB coach and we're talking about defensive backs and stuff. So you say, coach, this really doesn't have anything to do with what you do in the back end. This stuff all works together. Coverage is coverage to me. Okay, so we've got a situation here where we've got a 32 set. And you're like, well, it doesn't look like 32. It looks like this is a receiver. Essentially, this is a guy that we have identified as a receiver. So this is just 32. So who's on him? Boundary halfback is apexed in the box. He'll go wherever he goes on the snap. Here comes your seven man. Go across the formation with him when he kind of runs that, that, that sub route out of the backfield off the motion. Play over top of this pick. Play over top of this attempted pick. Do not go underneath it, over top of it, get him on the ground. Nice solid tackle, let it be gained to three yards. We can live with second and seven. Okay, so this time we're bringing the boundary half back. The free safety's got to rotate over. Okay, the free safety's got to rotate over. Now, one thing I want you to see here at the top, take a look at our field halfback spot here. I said we want to align at nine, which means we should essentially be right on this line, but we're, we're not staying still. We're not flat footing it. Look at him. Right? He's backing up, backing up, backing up. We can't play zero like that, right? If this is a slant, if this is a slant, an out, a stop, anything like that, it's pitch and catch. They're just going to beat us all day, right? So you've got to hold your water in there. Our free safety rotating over week on this slant does a great job. Watch this. Flat foots it, sticks his foot in the ground, drives the slant, boom, big collision. Now they catch the football. Those guys get, you know, those guys are good too, right? But our free safety plays this is about as well as you can. Okay, here we go. Motion to cluster at the top. Motion to cluster at the top, right? Now, the one thing that's different about this situation than I would say in the middle of the field is the ball's on the six yard line. We can't have our DB standing five yards deep in the end zone, right? Just the scenario is if they catch the ball right here, it's a touchdown. So we're in really, uh, you know, an a situation full of anxiety here. We got a flat line here at like six yards, which is tough, man. That's tough, especially when these guys got the run at you but our guys do it well, okay? They let this stuff sort out. Field half takes the immediate route to the flat. He's got it. It options back inside on him, sticks his foot in the ground, breaks back with it. Boom, knocked down, got it, right? In the boundary, we're in good position right here with Trey playing on the goal line, waiting for the slant underneath it, nor for the QB to throw the ball, right? So that's what zero looks like. Now, I'm gonna talk about catch man technique here. We'll go to that next on this slide. Let me go back to uh, the full screen. Catch man. We'll run catch man versus five or six man pressure. If you're going to go five man pressure, assuming you still have a, a whole player in the middle of the field, then you can play outside leverage on the catch. But if you're going to go six man and send both linebackers, then you really need to play inside leverage on catch, okay? So, but you can play inside or outside leverage, help and pressure dependent. You could have a post or a whole player depending on the front and pressure call. Four yards off, okay, three, three quarters inline leverage. What does that mean? It means I am almost perfectly squared up on that receiver, okay? I am just playing a slight shade, but three quarters of my body is inside of three quarters of his frame, okay? Slight shade inside or outside. Square hips, slight stagger in the feet, all right? I want the hips square, not open at all. 
but a slight stagger in the feet with the leverage foot up. So if we're playing inside leverage, inside foot's up to take away an inside release, outside leverage, outside foot's up to deter an outside release, okay? We're looking to collision the receiver. Essentially what we're trying to do is we're playing basketball on defense and we're trying to take the charge, okay? So we really can't give up ground. Remember, we're trying to catch the wide receiver. We're not trying to jam the wide receiver. We're not initiating contact by throwing our hands out at him either in front of us or out to our side. We don't want to create separation from the receiver. We want to be able to cling to him. So let him run into you. And then we'll just naturally turn with and run in phase with the receiver. All right. We have to limit switch situations due to how tight we are to the line of scrimmage. There's not a lot of room to read this stuff out. So if there are any switches, they have to be immediate and everything's got to be in front of you and it's got to happen quick. Um, otherwise there's a, there's a chance for us to bust on a switch. Okay. And then lastly, you can't play this technique given ground, all right? In the CFL and Canadian football as a whole, you got five yards of contact. So any contact that takes place, if you inch back to six or seven yards and try and collision at that point in time, you're likely going to get an illegal contact battle, okay? So what does this look like from a coverage standpoint, right? I had to go all the way back to 2011 to find catch technique clips here for you to look at. We'll just take a look at three really quick. All right, and I've got the uh, hot spots turned on, so you'll be able to figure out. I can tell you we're looking at the slot at the bottom here. It's Weston Dressler versus Brandon Smith, right? Excellent position and execution. He doesn't show it immediately, right? He shows he's in off coverage in his tilt position, and then he walks down late when Dressler starts to do his run up. Okay, now watch the collision. Boom, right? He's not trying to jam him. He's just essentially catching him, and he's square. Hips are not open at all. Square, boom, collision. And now essentially Dressler's having to run through him and he can't get off the release or sorry, he can't get off the, uh, the collision and the quarterback would have to look elsewhere. Okay. Essentially he's killed the route. The route's dead at this point in time. All right. So that's an excellent display of, of catch technique right here against Toronto field half and boundary half both do a fantastic job here. Right. Notice again, they're not showing it early. They're not playing down at the line of scrimmage salivating like they're playing press coverage. They come down there quick and then watch him catch at the bottom. Boom, right? He's square. Face to face, up at the top. Boom, he's square. There's no separation between the defensive backs. Now, it's third down. If you check the sticks at the bottom or you look in the top corner, it's third and five. So we know we're going to get quick routes. And these guys are in great position. They're sitting right on top of those routes. There's no room for the QB to fit the football in there. to it. Okay, the Sam linebacker in the slot. Interception working the other way. Okay, so that's what that's what our catch technique would look like. And then lastly, and I know I got to be quick here, uh, coach. Um, is trail man and essentially trail man is our our two cover two man under right and it says four or five man pressure in there uh because to me if you want to go five man pressure and peel the front in a miami call or not in a miami call but in a two man call um you certainly can do so right instead of uh putting the mike linebacker definitively on him you could rush five and then peel the front in a, in a two man situation especially since it's a second down um second down and long distance situation all right so We've got two high free players, split coverage, uh, split safety coverage, man defenders are taking away short and intermediate windows and trail, inside leverage, okay, two yards off, square hip, slight stagger like we mentioned earlier with catch technique with the leverage foot up, collision the receiver. Now we can be more aggressive in trail than we could in catch technique because we've got two high defenders over the top helping out, okay, so if we get beat off the line of scrimmage, it's not the end of the day, all right, we can turn with and play underneath all right, so we can play underneath the receiver. So if he runs an out route, you're underneath it. If he runs an inside breaking route, you're underneath it. And you made very, very difficult windows on the intermediate routes for the quarterback to fit the ball into, okay? Every defender has his own guy. We're not switching all that stuff. We're playing too tight to the line of scrimmage to do much switching. All right, so if you get a radical inside release, defensive backs need to jet stream on crossers. And jet stream means that you get in, you directly get in directly behind them and run across, uh, run across the field, right? Uh, chasing them right from behind so that you don't get picked off by a receiver coming the other way on the mesh concept, okay? 
So let's take a look at two or three quick cutups here uh, of this, and then I'll be finished. I'll be wrapped up. You'll see how tight the guys come down to the line of scrimmage. All right, there's a couple instances here where you see our corners play a little bit further off. We don't need the field corner to play press really in any situation, right? And then sometimes a boundary corner, Trey Roberson likes to play off, but then he sits, he just sits at eight yards and waits. Okay, so look how aggressive these guys are down here. Amos does a great job in the slot. Take a look. If you were to look at this right now, where are they going with the football? On top, on top, on top, on top. There is no room to flip this football in here. Now, as this play develops and carries through, he ultimately gets inside Amos a little bit and catches the football. But again, as I said, these guys are good too. But this really, we're in great position. And what the one thing that you're doing is you're forcing the quarterback to throw the ball into extremely tight windows. Extremely tight windows. Okay, this just motions itself back to a uh, to a 32 set. Right, we get the stack. Now watch how aggressively the corner is or sorry, how aggressive the corner plays on this because he knows he's got help from the will linebacker over top. He literally attacks Ellingson at the line of scrimmage. It right? just goes after him, disrupts the timing, disrupts the spacing on the fade route, and now we've got help over top, ball falls incomplete. It's going to be third and 10. You see the punt team getting ready to run out or the punt return unit getting ready to run out. Last play I got on here so I don't run over. This is why even in a cover two situation, we wouldn't come down and have everybody play tight to the line of scrimmage. Look at this motion to cluster here, and we end up busting coverage. We're bust coverage because there, there's not enough time for us to figure all this out, or there's not enough space, sorry, for us to figure all this out. If we want to come down in this scenario and press the guy in the line of scrimmage, I can live with that. But let's not get greedy, right? Let's not get greedy and put the high player in a bad situation. Okay, so guys, um, that's everything I've got. I think I've maybe gone a minute over here. I apologize for that. I want to get going. It's hard for me to uh, stop. I get pretty excited. Um, but I appreciate the opportunity uh, to speak to you guys tonight. If anybody wants to reach out or has any questions, uh, certainly uh, I'm happy to, uh, to answer those questions for you. And I'm mostly excited about listening to Scott talk next. Matt, I think we got set up a little bit. He started his presentation saying, you know, I don't have much experience doing these and stuff, and he just killed it. That was awesome, Coach Cameron. Thank you. Okay, thanks, man. I appreciate it, guys. Yeah, thanks, Coach. That was great stuff. Okay.